Good afternoon from the kitchen folks. It's another experimental brew day. I've currently got uh, a dark beer on the boil uh, and now I'm going to make something I've never made before which is a turbo cider. This is going to be one of the simpler brews I've ever made. A turbo cider is basically apple juice from concentrate and if we look at the ingredients the only ingredient is apple juice from concentrate. That means that these are apples that have been dehydrated and rehydrated for shipping probably. There's no additives and that's that, just apple juice. So it makes a really straightforward and simple cider. It's meant to ferment quickly which is why it's called a turbo cider. We'll see what happens. I'm going to add some honey to mine because I'm trying to make quite a strong one. So one of the easiest brews I've ever done consists of pouring some apple juice through a funnel into my demijohn. So far so good. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit of spring water into this saucepan. I'm using spring water because the tap water in Leeds is a bit chlorine and I don't want it to spoil this. And then into the saucepan I'm going to pop a tea bag. Now you might think what is he doing? I've been advised to do this. Apparently um, it needs a bit more of a tannin boost and uh, apple juice from cartons doesn't have enough tannin in it. So if I make a little bit of tea uh, that should replace the tannins and it shouldn't make the cider taste of tea. Okay, I'm taking the bag out. Right, so my tea's coming to the boil and I'm now going to pour in the honey. And I want the hot water to melt the honey which it should do quite easily. So my tea and my honey are coming together nicely. Okay, the liquid's boiling. It's time to turn it off. Now I want to get it into my demijohn. I'm using Lalvin Champagne Sparkling Wine and Cider Yeast and you'll see that it activates really quickly. It's great yeast. So I'm going to add the equivalent of about a teaspoon. A little bit more for good measure. It's about one fifth of the packet. One of these packets will do uh, five gallons. So I'm just going to agitate it around a little bit so it mixes in. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my uh, GoPro, which I'm filming on, on a time-lapse sequence so you can see the yeast activating. Okay, so we'll take a temperature check now. 20, 20.1, that'll do. Right, let's take a hydrometer reading. And I'm starting off with an original gravity of 1062, 1064, 1066. A Battle of Hastings original gravity. In fact, the last one I took was also this, the last beer I was doing. So 1066. So I'm going to pour my apple juice and honey back into the damage on. Okay, so I've had no eruptions, still got a little bit of space in the top. I should hopefully get five bottles at least out of this. I doubt I'll get six, but I should get five. And the airlock is now in place, and I'm just waiting for that pressure to start activating and the uh, bubbles to start popping. So I'm just popping it in my living room now, in front of the fire, to get it warmed up a little bit and to get it fermenting. So there's a lot of activity. This is 24 hours later and the cider and honey is really popping away. 
just love this. So I'm going to leave this now until it ferments out. Afternoon from the kitchen folks on this glorious day. I'm going to be clearing my apple cider with honey. It is looking okay to me. There's a very small amount of sediment in the bottom so I want to clear it to just above that line. All the way to the top. Yes there's still a little bit of activity but when you actually look at the tube at the top, the airlock, it's not doing an awful lot and in fact that's speeded up since I stood it on the windowsill in the sunshine. So I'm going to attempt to clear it today uh, or rack it off as it's known and then leave that for a few days and see what happens before I decide whether or not to bottle it. So bung out, siphoning tube in and now the fun bit. So I can see where my tube is inside the damage on and as long as I keep it above the sediment level then that's all good. Okay so that's now all in there just to above the sediment level. I'm using Clear It Wine Finings from Young. You get two bottles A and B. You've got to add a little bit of A. It says about 5ml. I'll put that much in. And then I've got to take my container and just give it a good shake around like that. So the findings really mix us. I can feel the expansion happening. There's a lot of gas in this still. So I'm quite hopeful of a fizzy cider. So I've now got to leave this for an hour um, to settle and then I add finings B to it. Okay, an hour has passed and you'll notice in the bottom there that finings A has already done a good job. So I'm going to try and transfer this back into the original demijohn gently so I avoid bringing that back across with me before I add finings B. Definitely some fizz in this. So now I'm going to put some finings B into the damage on that I'm pouring into. Again, same amount as what I've just been doing for finings A. It's about 5ml, which is about a fifth of what's in there. One of these bottles will do uh, 5 gallons. Okay, so that's all really sedimentary. I'm going to leave that and I'm not going to transfer that back across. Boom has been cleaned. That goes back in. I'm now going to leave this for a few days and hopefully those findings are going to do a good job for me and drag all the cloudiness to the bottom, leaving me hopefully five bottles, five 750ml bottles to take out of this. Hey folks, it's bottling day of the apple and honey turbo cider. Just look how lovely and clear that cider is. There's been the most minimal amount of airlock activity, probably one bubble every minute. It's cleared lovely, the findings have done a great job. So now it's time to bottle. So I've got bottles and hydrometer flask in the sink. Bung out, tube in, and here goes the fun bit. So as long as I keep this above the level of the sediment, then I should be good. I might get a little bit of sediment in this last one, but 
it is a very very small amount I'm gonna get a lot of cider five bottles definitely out of this one and that's really good and the bubbles in the pipe signify the siphoning is over okay I've got five bottles there I need to put carbonation drops in these are basically like specialist sugar cubes it's three drops per 750 ml bottle and this will kick start the carbonation process it will cause it to build up pressure inside and it will make the end product more fizzy really you should put these in first but I forgot so it's three per 750 ml or one per 250 ml serving If you don't have carbonation drops, and I've only just started using them, you can just use normal sugar, a teaspoonful per bottle. I need to get my bungs in now, so I'm just going to pour the hot water off. So these can be really challenging to get into the bottles um, because they're hard, but softening them in hot water usually helps. There's one, two, three. getting tougher as these are cooling in temperature from the hot water being poured off they're actually getting more difficult to push in five okay we now need cages and these will prevent missile accidents and trust me it does happen they're not just here for vanity reasons so I put the cages on next all of these cages are recycled from Prosecco champagne sparkling wine bottles the plastic bungs themselves I've bought from Amazon and the bottles are all recycled bottles from drinks that we've had that we bought so they're all either champagne sparkling wine uh, sparkling cider or uh, beer bottles basically but ones that can hold the pressure because this does get pressure So cages all secured, five fresh bottles standing on my sink. So all that remains now is for me to take the final gravity of the cider. Wow, it sank straight to the bottom. That's never happened before. Uh, so I've had to pour a little bit of the uh, liquid from the bottom of the demijohn into here to top it up but it's now buoyant and you will see that the final gravity is dead on 1 1 1.000 so that is a really good final gravity indicating quite a strong cider so I now need to take the original gravity and the final gravity and work out what percentage alcohol this cider is. I hope it's going to be a strong one. So I need to work out the alcohol percentage. So I take the original gravity, which was 1.066, if you remember, 1066. I minus the final gravity, which is 1.000. That equals... 0 0.066 and I multiply this by 131.25 and that equals a final alcohol percentage of 8.66%. I'm very very happy with that. In fact after the carbonation drops have kicked in that's probably going to be near a 9%. So that's a really, really good result as far as I'm concerned. Anyway, it's got a little bit of sediment in there, but I feel like I need to celebrate my first turbo cider. So I'm just going to give it a little taste and see what it's like. I will be tasting it in two weeks time and I'll be filming that also as part of this film. But let's just have a little, little sneak peek. That is dry. There is no hint of honey whatsoever. All the honey has served to do 
is whack up that alcohol percentage but that's dry it's it tastes like really good quality apple cider really good quality dry apple cider turbo ciders I, I like it I'm going to carry on doing these so cheers next film will be in two weeks time and that will be the unbottling and tasting uh, to see how, uh, how this has uh, turned out okay so cheers folks Evening folks from the kitchen, it's dry cider opening evening and let's see what this has turned out like. So cage off. I'm hoping for a little bit of sparkle, I don't know whether I'll get any or not. It feels like there's some life. Oh, Gosh, that was a struggle. And not a lot of uh, a fizz, but I can see some signs of bubbles on top. We have a sparkle insider. Cheers. Oh, real powerful smell. Really, really apply. And it tastes absolutely fantastic. My first turbo cider, a huge success. It's a really medium dry and very, very apply cider. It tastes like really good quality cider. The honey's not really coming through, but that is good cider. I am very happy with this. Turbo ciders are the future. I shall be making more of them. So, cheers, folks. <sighs> the film that you've just watched is a Moss Home and Garden production. You can find more by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk. I'd just like to say thank you very much for supporting my YouTube channel and for watching my films. It really is very much appreciated. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my YouTube channel in order to receive future updates about the home and garden films which I upload. You can find my YouTube channel by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk. Please click on the red subscribe button. When you've done that, a little bell will appear. If you press that also, then you'll get future updates about the films which I upload. If you like my films, if you like my style of filming, then you might also like my travel channel, which you will find by going to youtube.com forward slash Stuart Moss or typing www.mosstravel.tv. Again, if you could subscribe to that channel, it would be hugely appreciated. If you'd like to get Moss Home and Garden updates on Facebook, then please open Facebook and do a search for Moss Home and Garden and you will find the page. If you like the page, then you will get future updates on there. And if you'd like to connect on Instagram for home, garden and travel photography, as well as some stories, then my username is Stu Moss, S-T-U-M-O-S-S. -S. If you'd like to connect on Twitter, then my username is at Stuart Moss. And if you'd like to contact me about film usage or any other issue, please just email me on stewmosshomegarden at gmail.com. Once again, thank you very much for supporting my channel, for watching my films. I do appreciate it. I'd just like you all to have a great day.